Um, we're going to be working on lesson 1-9, so topic 1, lesson 9. Um, the goal from today is I can solve addition and subtraction word problems. Um, in class, we've been discussing keywords and words that are going to help us to decide if something is an addition problem or a subtraction problem. Um, another skill that you might know is the RDW. This just means read, draw, and then write. So first, you're going to probably want to read that word problem, then draw a picture, whether it's drawing an equation, drawing out some characters that you might hear about, drawing counters, drawing something that's going to help you to understand what's going on in that problem. And then the last thing is to write and solve out that equation. So I've got some word problems and we're going to practice them. All right, so Kente has five pencils. Jordan has 13 pencils. You have a picture in your head. There are two people. Um, how many more pencils does Jordan have than Kente? So we know that there are two. So we've got one person that has five and one person that has 13. And we're trying to figure out how many more that Jordan has than Kente. So you could be thinking in your head, okay, here's Jordan. She's got these pencils. She has 13. I'm going to go ahead and write out my 13. We know that that number is larger than the 5. Kente has 5. We're trying to figure out how many more. That's a subtraction equation. So we're going to subtract. If it asked how many do they have together, how many do they have in all, that would be addition. But how many more is a comparison. So 13 minus 5. Hmm, how am I going to solve that? You could count on. You could count up, you could count back. Is this a near doubles fact? No, it's not. Um, hmm. Maybe you could even use a double tens frame. It's kind of up to you how you want to solve this. If I had 13, do I have, I need one more little section. So if I had 13 dots, I'm gonna fill in my top of my 10 frame and then I'm going to come down below and I'm going to draw three more. And I'm going to just erase five. That's the easiest thing I could do. One, two, three, four, and five. I know that five on the top and three on the bottom means that there are eight. So how many more pencils does Jordan have than Kente? Eight. And how do I know this? How could I explain that? Well, what I did first was first I drew on my double ten frame 13. Then I subtracted five. So I know that the answer is 8. All right, let's do another one. So some of these are going to have multiple steps. Some of them are going to just be a little bit easier than others. So let's kind of check out and see where this one falls. Callie collects stickers. You have a picture of somebody named Callie in your head? She has 18, and when I see the numbers, I always like to circle them. 18 in her collection. Oh, so she's got 18. Let's keep going. She puts some on her folder and some on her notebook. Those aren't numbers. When I see the word some, I just think of like a box. Write one equation to show a way she could have placed them. So what we know is, and I'm going to think of a bar diagram when I'm thinking of this, because those boxes are kind of like parts, like part, part, whole. The whole number that she has is the 18, so I'm going to write that at the top. Then I have these two parts. Now remember, if it just says the word sum, sum just kind of means like question mark, like we an unknown number. We don't know it. So I have two question marks. I can make up any number that I want as long as the number plus the second number that I make up equals 18. So if you wanted, you could say any variety of ways that has the sum of 18. So you could say that she puts one on her folder and 17 on her notebook. That makes sense. Look back at it. It says she has a collection of 18. She puts some on the folder. She could just put one. She could put two on her folder and 16 on her notebook. As long as you have an equation that shows she has a total of 18, you can pick any numbers that you want. You could have a doubles fact such as 9 and 9 to equal 18. Hmm, 
What if you don't want to do a double stack? Is that okay? Sure, you can choose 10 and 8. That's an easy one. What you can't choose is 0 and 18 because then it wouldn't say that there were some on that notebook or some on that folder. 0 would say that there are none. So you have to choose numbers for the sum and numbers for, um, so for the sum that are on her notebook and numbers that would be the sum that are on the folder. You can't put zeros on there. So it has to be some value. Um, so write one equation. I could write one equation. I'm gonna just pick the 10, 10 plus eight equals 18 and explain. I'm gonna just say Callie puts 10 on her folder. Why can't I make the letter F? F-O-L-D-E-R and eight on her notebook. Ta-da! All right, that's it. Moving along, let's check out the next problem. All right, this is a Patty and Seth equation. All right, so Patty has five bouncy balls. Seth gives her three more. Wow, she's got more bouncy balls. Patty bought seven more. Wow, we're seeing the word more in here a lot. Seven more bouncy balls. How many bouncy balls does she have now? Wow, that's a lot. I hope she doesn't drop them. They would bounce everywhere. Um, marker, here we go. So Patty has five. If Seth is giving her more, then the value or the number that she has is going to get greater. So she gets three more. If she buys some, then that means that she has more again. Seven more. How many bouncy balls does she have now? So this is going to be an addition equation. All of these more, 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 and buying and giving, that means more. So we're going to write out five plus three plus seven equals something. Now that something is going to tell us how many bouncy balls that she has all together. Um, ooh, when I look at this, I see 5 plus 3 plus 7. I see that I know 3 plus 7 equals 10. That's me pushing that easy button. 3 plus 7 equals 10. So I'm going to do that step first. I'm going to bring down my number 5. And now my new equation is 5 plus 10. So five ones plus zero ones is five ones, and no tens plus one ten is one ten. So Patty has 15 bouncy balls. I hope she has them in a pouch because that would be a very bouncy situation if they fell. All right, here we go. Caden sold 15 cups of lemonade. Ooh, I bet you that was nice. I hope he made some money. Now he has three. How many did he have to begin with? Oh, this is a working backwards type of equation. So if he sold them, it means that they're gone, right? And now he has three. We're trying to figure out how many he had before he sold them. So we could write the equation in more than one way. This is where sometimes you think addition to figure out a subtraction equation. So if Caden had some, right? We don't know how many it was. And he sold them, which means it's subtraction. And now he has three. This is how that equation looks. But since I know that addition and subtraction equations are related, I know that if I, if I work backwards and say three plus 15 will tell me how many that he had to begin with. Hmm, which kind of way would I like to do this? Oh, I know. If I think about this open number line, if I start at the number 15 and then I count up three spots, that'll tell me 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So remember, if we're using that open number line, I'm going to put a dot on my start number. I'm not going to count that as my first spot. I'm going to do a jump. So there's one, two, three. Here's my stop spot on number 18. Caden had 18 cups of lemonade before he sold them. I could also say 15, 16, 17, 18. 
There's more than one way in order to solve this. This is just the open number line if you wanted to remember how to do that. So Malaya has 13 marbles in her bag. Do you have a picture in your head of a bag that has 13 marbles? That's kind of how I think about it. Some marble marbles fall on the floor. Uh-oh, maybe there's a hole in the bag. Maybe that's how they fell. Now Malaya has eight marbles in the bag. How many are on the floor? Oh, this makes me think of a bar diagram too. If she has 13, we know one of the parts is eight. The other part, we are not sure about. So eight plus some number equals 13. Or 13 minus a number equals the eight. Remember, these are related facts. You could also switch it around to say 13 minus eight, and that'll tell you what the difference is, and that'll tell you how many have fallen to the floor. So I'm gonna just go back real quick. I don't know why I'm choosing yellow. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it. Um, it's possible. Maybe it's not possible. I'm gonna just switch real quick. All right, and I put fall on the floor, and that's what I've underlined. Um, I also should put a box around some. All right, so 13 minus eight. I'm gonna try counting up. Some people might say counting on, both of those are the same. So I'm gonna count on starting at eight. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There must be five that fell on the floor. Well, what if I'm not really sure? Maybe I'll draw the marbles just to make sure. So let's see. When I'm drawing out my marbles, I wanna make it look kind of like the 10 frame with five on the top, five on the next row, and then I'm gonna draw three. See how that kind of looks like the 10 frame? If I get rid of eight of them, I'm gonna just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I notice that there are five. That also makes sense. If I plug in the number five over here, eight plus five, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. That also equals to 13. I've checked it in a lot of different ways, so how many are on the floor? There are five on the floor. All right, here is another one. This is probably the trickiest one. Um, on your worksheet pages, I believe this was like number eight um, for lesson nine on topic one. Um, and I kind of just switched it around a little bit. It's kind of tricky. Um, you might have to stop and really think about this. So good thing we know how to break it down into smaller parts. Elijah has nine Legos. Xavier has three fewer than Elijah. Hmm. So think in your head, who has more marbles, Elijah or Xavier? You're right. Elijah has more. If it says that Xavier has fewer, then when I think about Xavier, I know that he has a lesser amount than nine. Giselle has four Legos. How many Legos do they have in all? It says show your work and explain. Okay, let's back it up a little bit. Let's think about the things that we do know. We know Elijah has nine. We know that Giselle has four. We know that Xavier has an amount of Legos that is going to be fewer than Elijah. So I'm not going to just add nine plus three plus four and say that my answer would be, what is that really fast? 16, if you put 16, that would be incorrect. So let's figure out how many that Xavier has so we can find out what this is. So Elijah has nine and Xavier has three fewer. That keyword fewer tells us that we're gonna have to subtract from what we do now. So we're gonna have to do nine, take away that three, That'll tell us how many Xavier has. Nine minus three. Hmm. Nine fingers. These are just ways that you can do it. If you know how to do it in your head, then roll with that. So if I had nine fingers and then I put three down, I have got six remaining. That's what the answer will be for how many Xavier has. This is not my final answer. Now I have to show 
how many Legos do they have in all? I'm going to have to show my work. We've got some work here, but we need to have an equation. So then we can explain what we did. So for my equation, I'm going to look only at the numbers that we are adding. So nine, four, and six. Nine plus four plus six will tell me how many Legos they have in all. Oh, I noticed that six plus four, that's a partner pair to 10. So my new equation should be nine plus 10. That's a near double. Notice how they're really close to one another. Um, nine plus 10 is 19. Nine ones plus zero ones is nine ones. No tens plus one ten is one in the tens place. So together, they have 19 Legos. What did I do if you were doing your explain? First, you had to figure out what Xavier had. So if I was explaining, I would say first, I found out that Xavier had six. And so I would write, I found out that Xavier had six, blah, 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 blah. Next, I added six plus four plus nine, whichever you wrote for your equation, that's what you would put here. Um, and I found out that all together they had 19. Um, your explanation needs to be words explaining how you did the equations, explaining what you did. You can't just say, I used my brain or I used my fingers. You have to explain, like if you're going to tell somebody that's never even heard of math before, what you did, how you got your work. Um, there have been a couple of friends in class that have just been writing, I used my brain, I used my fingers. You've got to explain and prove with your work and your words exactly what you did in order to solve those equations. Um, this is just like a little snippet of what you will be doing in lesson nine of topic one.